I shall reign triumphant. Welcome back to Villain Review episode 67 and today we are looking at Homelander from the Amazon Prime show The Boys. Real quick, shout out to Koopa for suggesting Homelander and as always if there's a villain you want me to review make sure to leave them down in the comments. How good of a villain is Homelander? Let's break him down and find out. So something we have to talk about is that Homelander is very clearly a character created as sort of a parody of Superman. Superman, who was raised by two loving parents in a small town, turned out to be a pretty like upright citizen, you know, somebody who could fight for justice and whose sense of morality is so straight, they've probably never filled up a water cup with Sprite like, like most humans, if we're just being honest. Homelander, however, would not only fill up all the cups with Sprite, he would kill everyone that looked at him funny and then I don't know, he'd probably throw Ronald McDonald into space or something. Unlike Superman, Homelander was raised in a lab with no parents, only doctors who performed tests on him all the time. Spending most of his days in front of a projector being shown patriotic images, Homelander's personality was slowly molded for him as he spent all day looking at American propaganda stuff, you know, like baseball and the American flag and drive through restaurants, you know, that, that kind of stuff. What is really sad about this origin story is that Homelander actually fought back against the childhood he was given and tried to find some normalcy in it. Finding a motherly figure in one of the female doctors at the lab, Homelander seemed to actually find someone he cared about and vice versa, but unfortunately, he accidentally killed her when he hugged her too tight. Personally, I think this is a really tragic origin, and I give it credit for being super realistic, you know? Because if superheroes really did exist, the government wouldn't just be like, hey, good for you, fella, go save the world. They would probably be more like, good for you, fella, give us all your blood and your organs and, you know what, actually just give us everything. When you think about Homelander and what he really wants in this series, it's really just love. He seeks that in the public and in Madeline Stillwell and in season 2 Stormfront. It's pretty clear that all he wants is love because that's what he was never really given when he was younger. The guy has serious trust issues because all the people who raised him only really took care of him because they needed him. He wants love from somebody who cares about him, not because they have to, because they want to. It actually kind of reminds me of Kilgrave from Jessica Jones. I know some people got a little heated when I said I felt bad for Titan and Megamind, but I'm going to say it again. I feel a little bad for Homelander, mainly because he's lived most of his life without love, and that's kind of sad. You know, even real, even the real gangsters need some love sometimes. Welcome to the Salty Splatoon. How tough's your motive? I want the Allspark to take over the world. Oh, the little cube? Uh, I, I respect that. What about you? Welcome to the Salty Splatoon. How tough's your motive? Koba, want to end ape racism. Oh, okay, I, I, I really respect that. What about you? I want to eat... Oh, the children in the world. Uh, that's intense. What about you? I want someone to love me. <laughs> Ten seconds later. <laughs> the Boys as a show is really good at making characters, and the writing is all around really smart, especially when it comes to the Seven. So many of the Seven are just unlikable people, but the writing still finds a way to make them all likable, even Homelander, who is just an awesome villain to have around. If you've kept up with my past villain reviews, you'll know that I really think presence is important and how much impact villains have on a scene they're in. Luckily, this is something Homelander does incredibly well, and his scenes bring a whole new aspect to the show. One of the awesome things about Homelander is that he's pretty much like a god, right? Nobody can stop him. And he's so unpredictable that literally nobody is safe at any point. It's one thing to have a character that could kill anyone whenever they wanted to, but it's another thing to have a character that just might do it. A lot of times in shows and movies where they have this big, super powerful character, they always have a way to stop them, right? Toph, Katara, Sokka, and Zuzu, they can all team up to take down Aang, right? Batman and the Justice League, they can take down Superman. And Dipsy, Lala, and Poe can definitely take down Tinky Winky if they really tried. Okay, well maybe not, but you get the point. With Homelander, I feel like that's not happening. I don't see any of the members of the Seven teaming up to take him down, even if they tried. Another thing I really like about Homelander is just how much personality he has. He's so charming and charismatic when he's in the public, but behind closed doors, he does not give a f 
good anyone cares about him. He does whatever he wants. He's just like, hey, what are you gonna do about it? He has this strange sense of humor that's kind of dark and his bluntness even adds to that, making him downright hilarious at times. But at the same time, we see a sensitive side of him, that side that craves attention and love. It really humanizes him. And while he has no physical weaknesses besides like zinc, it shows that he really does struggle deep down. For a figure that sometimes feels so unhuman, is, is that a word? It's these sensitive moments that make us understand that he's really just like all of us, besides, you know, the equipped god mode he has. <laughs> if you saw my top 10 actors of 2020 video, you would know that I think Anthony Starr is absolutely incredible as Homelander. He plays both sides super well, almost to perfection, and that results in some of the best scenes in the entire show. In fact, two of my favorite scenes in the entire show, maybe my two favorite scenes, are the interactions between Homelander and Butcher, maybe, especially the two season finales at the end of one and two. And actually, I have a whole video breaking down one of them, so check that out after this video if you want. What I will say though, is that as far as interesting dynamics go, Homelander's scenes always have the best. A conversation with Homelander is automatically super tense because we have no idea what's going to happen to the other person. Like I said, he's also pretty funny and he gets stuff done, man. Like, there's not so much action in the show, but when Homelander does something, it looks super easy for him and it just shows how powerful he is. He has the best scenes in the show and every time he's on screen, I get nervous, but like, in a good way. It's like that feeling you get right before you go on a roller coaster because you're like, this could be cool or it could go terribly wrong and kill everyone. It's like that. Man, oh man, does this guy do some evil things. Honestly, I don't even know where to start. So there's this airplane, right? And it's flying in the sky and this little kid sees Homelander. So he gets hyped naturally. But then Homelander says, hey, fuck you stupid kid and your stupid plane and everyone dies. Um, let's see what next. Oh, okay. So there's this plane, right? And Homelander kills these naughty boys inside, right? But then the people are like, Homelander, the plane is going down, save us. And then Homelander's like, I could, but that could be hard. So he flies away and everyone dies. All of this happens, get this, within a few episodes in the first season. The things Homelander does are truly terrible. Sometimes people who deserve it, but most of the time people who don't. I can sit here all day talking about all the terrible things Homelander has done, but that would make this video like multiple hours and we don't really have time for that. I will say that it's incredible to have a character who does such horrible things, but I personally still can feel a little bad for him. Not, not all the time, but I can still feel a little bad. It's a testament to the writing and to how good Anthony Starr's performance is. It doesn't happen with a lot of villains. Achoo! Aren't you gonna say bless you? Don't mention it, pal. Hey, 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 stop, what are you doing? You can't fill up water cups with Sprite. What are you gonna do about it, huh? Thanks, Homelander. You got it, pal. Give me a water cup, though, for some Sprite. Uh, I mean, water cups are only for water, but I can ring you up for a Sprite cup if you want. Ten seconds later. Ah! You to do something for me, okay? Kill him. Homelander has an origin that is tragic, but it also does a really good job of setting up his personality and motive. He has a huge impact on the show because of his extreme presence, unique role, and an awesome performance by Anthony Starr. His scenes are some of the best in the show, and I really love every time I see him. He's incredibly evil, yet I personally can't help but feel a little bad for the guy. I'm gonna give Homelander a 9. Oh, okay, um, did, did, did I say nine? No, I meant, uh, I meant ten. Yeah, I'm gonna give Homelander a ten. Hey, buddy. You're out for quite a while. You can thank me for uh, saving you. Thank you so much for watching, and if you made until the end of the video, I greatly appreciate you. It was a long one, so if you finished it, you the real homies. Let me know what you think of Homelander in the comments, and as always, who I should review next. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you next time.